Heavenly Father, we know that Jesus is actually Joshua of the Old Testament, meaning Jehovah's Savior. And when he came in flesh, which he did, they did not know he was there. And when he upset the money changers and cleansed the temple, they were absolutely sure that he wasn't there. And then at the day of Pentecost, hovering the people and giving forth of his own life to them, they were sure. He wasn't there, but others were sure. And then Paul, how many believe that he was there with Paul, Lord? We know that very few did. <clears throat> and today very few believe that you were with Brother Branham. And I suppose, Lord, even fewer believe that you're here in a pillar of fire to lead us into the millennium. I don't understand all these things, Lord, but I know you're here. And I know you're here to the degree, to the extent that the prophet identified you, whoever you are, and said that you were here, and we received that. We apprehend it, Lord, we stand on it. We don't understand everything, we may never. But we're asking you, Lord, to help us to understand what we need to understand and grow in grace through the word of God, the life of which is released in us to our souls, that we may prosper therein and then blessing upon blessing be in health and prosper in the way we should prosper physically, maybe financially, I don't know. We know that's not so important, but we know it's necessary to a degree. These things are ours according to truth. According to truth, Lord, it is also the truth that if we walk in the light as you're in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us. <clears throat> these things we know. And you said in one place, happy are you if you know them and happier if you do them. There's some things, Lord, we can't do. No way we can do them. We can't give ourselves a revelation, Lord. We can't elevate ourselves by our bootstraps. We can't do many things, but Lord, there's things we can do. That is, we can believe the word until whatever we're supposed to do, we're enabled to do it. That much we know and we thank you for it. Bless us in our studies, therefore, today. May be because of your presence, all things be possible. As we saw it in the scripture with Mary, going to bring forth the child. And we saw with Brother Branham, even do creating a squirrels, Lord. We have to believe that because that's true. Help us then with your word this morning. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> May be seated. Now, relative to the message before I start it, a little thought came to me as I was sitting there, thinking in terms of talking the word to each other and getting into it on the grounds of how much you understand. It would be very easy for someone to say, well, look, <clears throat> I'm just not going to talk the word because I could add to it or take from it. Well, that's not going to do one bit of good because the angel of God said to Brother Branham, the thoughts of your heart speak louder in heaven than the words of your mouth. That's why the Bible could say, by your words you're justified, and by your words you're condemned. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Maybe we just don't have enough heartfelt or heartness in it. <clears throat> but let me tell you something. It's there. You just keep going on and these things that begin to strike you more and more. Now, we're going to start in on the blood of the everlasting covenant. I don't know how far we'll get. It doesn't really much matter. Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 20 to 21, and now the God of peace that brought again from the dead 
our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Now, all of this is by the blood. Now, the uh, <clears throat> Dr. Weiss translation, I'll just read it. Now, the peace of God, now the God of peace, the one who brought out from among the dead. That's a very good translation. The shepherd of the sheep, the great one, in the blood of an eternal testament, our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you in every good thing to do his will, doing that in you, pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And it tells you positively that the eternal covenant <clears throat> wouldn't have a conception, a continuation, with no ending except for the blood. Now, as we study this subject, let us be aware that the originator of this covenant is God, Elohim, El Ella, El, in a specific title or role, which is evidently Shalom, which <clears throat> evidently goes back to the time when God met Abraham in the form of the king of peace and righteousness before even uh, Isaac was born <clears throat> or the covenant doubly confirmed to him. So even though this is a Jehovah title complex, it's not really recognized as that. So you're going back to where Brother Branham said, this king of peace, the God of peace, is God himself, Elohim, and he said, Shalom. Now, Paul calls him Elohim, <clears throat> the God of peace, but he also uses other titles and roles as in Romans 15 and 5, the God of patience and consolation. Romans 15, 13, the God of hope. 2 Corinthians 1 and 3, the God of all comfort. 2 Corinthians 13, 11, the God of love and peace. That's the God of love, the God of peace. And as John in Revelation 11, 4 and 13, God of the earth and God of the heavens. Now, <clears throat> I do not believe that we have any right to equate the God of peace to the peace of God as though they could be one and the same. And we simply, though recognizing they are not the same, we pay no attention to them and leave them literally without meaning to, and yet meaning to, categorically the same it's not the same the god of peace is not the same as the peace of god but it is indeed that the peace of god <clears throat> comes from the god of peace is derived thereby therefrom thus the god of peace is actually now listen carefully and i hope you can follow me thus the god of peace is actually logos in the respect that we are viewing what truly is intrinsically God and that and comes into manifestation or demonstration of being that kind of God according to covenant and promised benefits. Now, what I'm saying is <clears throat> intrinsically we are looking at Elohim the God of peace. Now, what does it really mean? Well, what does it mean? It means that somehow God must come forth in that role and demonstrate such himself to be. 
Now, while the peace of God, what is it? It is only a grace of God sent from God and available to his children, which would designate in our particular condition <clears throat> that he is a God of peace and will pardon the expression, I'm going to coin the phrase low gossip. In other words, when the intrinsic elements become expressed, you'll find that's exactly what he is. Now, we're looking at it in a picture. Now, you see, what we're trying to do <clears throat> is to apprehend and at the same time do a little comprehending. <clears throat> see, okay. Herein is another battle of the senses against revealed faith as seen in Matthew 10 and 34. Now, let's look at Matthew 10 and 34 <clears throat> and see this God of peace. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not come to send peace but a sword. Now, here's what he said. Here is the God of peace doing violence as in the parable of the ten pounds, ten, five, and one, and the servants to whom he entrusted the vineyard, and the one man put the one pound in a napkin and hid it. He wouldn't use it. <clears throat> the other said, let's kill the son and take the vineyard. And God said, what am I going to do with that people? And here's what he says in Luke 19, 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Now you're getting something there. You're looking at a rain. How much peace have you got with mosquitoes buzzing you? And you're outside trying to work. That's just a little mosquito bite. How much peace have you got with people constantly climbing your spiritual frame? Not too much. You follow what I'm saying? God of peace said, they don't want me to reign over them. Now I'm going to give you my own thinking on the God of peace. Brother Branham said that, my own thinking, I'm going to give you mine. So don't try to hold me to it <clears throat> in the sense I can't come back and do a little changing. Not much, but a little. Maybe I don't have to. To me, it is the very same as God of the earth. It's better be and God of the heavens, which speak of a totality, a finality, a veritable, eternal God kingdom. You follow? Have God of heavens and earth. That's a veritable kingdom. You're looking at the God of peace in the same context in my thinking. Now, let me say it again. To me, it is the very same as God of the earth, God of the heavens, which speaks of a totality, a finality, a veritable eternal God kingdom, and therein we will find a Logos God, as it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 28, that God may be all and in all, intrinsically what he is will come forth in us at that time when everything is finally put under the feet of Jesus and he finally turns it back to the father or as in Isaiah 65 24 25 and before they call I will answer and while they're yet speaking I will hear the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy. In all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. <clears throat> and as it was spoken by God, so God himself manifests it. Yeah. <clears throat> was it Damon Runyon? 
It wasn't Hecht. It must have been Runyon. And I think he was a Jew. I suppose they're nearly all Jews anyway. And he said, they say the wolf and the lamb will lie down together, and when they do, I don't want to be the lamb. I do. I don't want to be typed just as a part of nature. I want to be typed as that part of nature which God said, you're the sheep of my, <clears throat> my pasture, the flock of my hands. Now, this comes by Matthew, <clears throat> the third chapter, 7 to 12. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to the, his baptism, <clears throat> he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And what is the fruit of the false prophet? Bring forth that word in its proper revelation. Get with the word. And think not to say within yourselves as you quote the word. And you can prove it by your lineage. We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to these stones <clears throat> to raise up to Abraham. Now let me tell you something, and I'm not vulgar here. What do they call the male's primary sex organs as to letter regeneration? They call them stones. They don't call them testicles in the Bible. What about stones being raised up? Abraham was given absolutely a youthful body, regenerating his sexual organs, reproductive organs, and so was Sarah. And John going right back there said, listen, God rejuvenated Abraham. He'll rejuvenate you. How? By a resurrection, better still, he will bring Jesus Christ from the dead in a rejuvenation, and he's called a stone also. Revelations called a stone, were called stones, little stones. <clears throat> he wasn't going to just raise up stones and pebbles out there. He was going to raise up his own little stones. This is a little metaphor here. A little figure, speech, whatever. <clears throat> Listen, God has laid these stones right up to Abraham. Now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth not forth good fruit, hewn down and cast in the fire, every single, and the Sadducees and Pharisees are there, and Brother Branham named the Herodians. <clears throat> Just like the Bible does. It says every one of those trees is going to be cut down. Every organization. I said this morning in my little preamble to you people, I said, get with it. If you add to the word, you get the plagues in the white throne. You take from the word, your name goes off the book. What do you think this is talking about? <clears throat> Why is the way narrow? The great's narrow and the, and the road is straight. Why? Because of this very thing. Listen. Is cast into the fire, I indeed baptize you with water and pens. But he that cometh after me is mighty and I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire, whose fan is in his hand, thoroughly purge his floor, gather his wheat in his garner, and he'll burn up the chaff with fire unquenchable. This is the God of peace. <clears throat> People don't believe he's the same yesterday and forever. They believe that they don't believe the God of an eye for an eye and a tooth for the tooth is the same one that was manifested in the Lord Jesus Christ and manifested now. But let me tell you, he said to the Hurry's church, he said, double under her, double. Bring her to the fourth power. <clears throat> Pay her back. You know what? Everybody's trying to get peace without the Prince of Peace. Everybody love each other. Brother Vale, you filthy swine. You've got to stand up there and hit these lovely brethren. I'm not hitting anybody. This is not my word. It's God's word. Well, let's get that flat. Don't you dare judge me for anything. Or you're sitting there a hypocrite. I mean nothing but a hypocrite. And if I stood up here as this with a club to club, I'd be a hypocrite. I'm positively emphasizing the word of God. I'm not out to club anybody. 
But I'm not going to betray God if I can help it. My own nature betrays him. That's where his nature stands for mine. His nature stands for you. No man ever lived this word or will live this word outside of Jesus Christ. But we can believe the word. It's a trouble. A bunch of seven-day Adventists and holy rollers. Pentecostals. Legalists. Stand up, pretend they live the word. They don't even believe it. Some of you sitting here this morning, you know what I'm talking about because in your heart you're already rebellious. Not some of you older, some of you younger ones. You can't take it. <clears throat> they go, leave, they'll have your funny old daddy out of the pulpit and sing his lullabies. I'm 75 pretty quick, but I tell you what, don't ever kid yourself. If the next man filling this pulpit will give you lullabies either. There's too many men in this church that are strong for the word of God. It's not my word, it's his word. See? <clears throat> it comes by Matthew 3, 7 and 12. Now, if you don't believe this, let's go back to the Old Testament. We'll prove it to you. Isaiah, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> and, of course, this is fantastic because it talks about that great one. Beginning at verse 9. Father, let's take, what do we start at? 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Notice, the Prince of Peace can only come after the apprehending of him who is wonderful, his counseling, did you recognize <coughs> to be of God, the mighty God proven by vindication. It is God. The everlasting Father. The great covenanter. Now you're coming to the Prince of Peace. But not before. Of the increase of his government and peace there should be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. And to establish it judgment. And with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now listen. God is my judge. I did not realize till this minute what I said and wrote down on a piece of paper here concerning I view this as the totality of the Logos of God in his own kingdom. Here's right here. You say, well, Baal, you're boasting. Call it what you want. I don't care what you call me. I'll meet you as I'm meeting you now before the white throne. I'm not afraid of anything when it comes to this word. Not boasting. Not both. Don't ever get that in your head. You got to hear me. You don't. Isaiah 52, who has believed in our report, and whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as root out of dry ground. He hath no form of comeliness, that we should, that we sh and when, uh, no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, <clears throat> there's no beauty, we des should desire him. He despised, rejected him, in a man of swords, acquainted the Greek. He hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, we esteemed him not. Why? <clears throat> because he was God manifest in flesh as a man, demonstrated, manifested. He said, I take counsel from nobody. Yeah. William Branham, God in him. Ugly little jerk, isn't he? Independence of hog on ice. Kentucky hillbilly. Who needs him? He never came to us. He never asked our advice. He came with a great ministry and blasted us. And says duplicity, now judgment hit that false prophet who judged others. Whoopee! Now, why don't you talk about Jesus? He hung on a cross with malefactors. Something's wrong. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, chastened when our peace was upon him. With his stripes were healed. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We turn everyone his own way. The Lord laid on the iniquities of own. Oppressed, afflicted, opened on his mouth, brought as a lamb to slaughter. The heat before shears down me, opened on his mouth. Taken from prison and judgment, who should declare his generation? <coughs> who should declare? Where's his firstborn? Where's his kids? Where's his babies? Who did he marry? Never had a wife. He might as well have been like Abraham. Emasculated, as it were. Never touched a woman. No way to procreate. He'll see his seed. <clears throat> Raise up those little stones. A generation of 2,000 years whose names are inscribed in no human manual as were the Jews. But in the Lamb's book of life and the book of redemption when that pillar of fire brought it down and identified his own. Is my name written there in print bold and clear? Sure. If you identify with the word of God, <clears throat> don't try to hedge about it. Identify. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering, and he shall see his seed prolong his days. Praise the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So when Paul is speaking of the God of peace, he is saying, now the God of peace that you use are looking forward to and who will bring peace and prosperity on earth by his presence, him being here, that is the very one you're looking for. That's the very one who raised Jesus from out amongst the dead. Jesus, the shepherd of the sheep. Lord's my shepherd, said David. Jesus, the great one. That's the scripture. Even our Lord Jesus Christ. May this God of Shalom, because of the blood of Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ, because of the blood, perfect you to the coming into and the possessing of the kingdom by reason of Elohim's everlasting covenant established to you and made available by the blood of Jesus unto the king and kingdom of peace. I'll read it to you to prove I said it right. <clears throat> Hebrews, the 13th chapter, 20 and 21. Oh, well, they'll get me down ranting and raving like Brother Brandon, but I'm in good company. Who gives a care? Now the God of peace that brought again out from amongst the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, Psalm 23. That great God who did that through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The covenant had to have a blood commensurate with it. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever without the blood it couldn't be done <clears throat> now the god of peace himself becoming functional to you by means of the death of the testator who died by the shedding of his blood to bring into effect the benefits of his legacy to his heirs, himself now perfects you, making you well-pleasing to himself and the heirs compatible to the eternal covenant of promise, which is as stated in 1 Corinthians 15, 28 and Isaiah 65, where God becomes all in and all and completely and perfectly logos unto his own and his own ultimate which is his purpose for you. <clears throat> Let me read it to you again. Now the God of peace, himself becoming functional to you, that's what it is, by means of the death of the testator, who died in the shedding of his blood to bring into effect the benefits of his legacy to his heirs, because you're looking to the kingdom. Himself now perfects you, making you well-pleasing to himself and heirs compatible to the eternal covenant of promise, which is as stated. 
God becoming all in and all. God all in all and completely and perfectly Logos. What we're just dreaming about. What we apprehend on a word of promise. What we see vindicated in this hour. Where we're stepping into it. We're apprehending it, brother, sister. We've apprehended it. The first step of apprehension is the descent with the message. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What Lord Jesus Christ? The second person of the Godhead? Who are you talking about? That's it. Turn back to pillar of fire. I can't explain it. I'm not interested in explaining it. <clears throat> I've apprehended it. And I talk it and I talk it. What else can I do? <clears throat> Let's go to Hebrews, the first chapter, because this is the book of Hebrews. I can see why Brother Branham started. I wish he'd finished it. First Peter, first Hebrews 1. God in the prophets. Verse 2. These last days spoken us in Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And this Son is the brightness, the outraying of his glory. <clears throat> of what is the actual assessment? Can I assess God? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Believest thou I'm in the Father and the Father in me? There's an assessment there. <clears throat> and the assessment is based on vindication as it's handed to us to apprehend it and say the same thing until there's comprehension to the degree that God desires to give it. This is in the beginning of God before there was one speck of creation and Brother Branham said a light came out of him. Then if a light came out of Elohim, tell me this, was that light intrinsically any different from Elohim? No! Well, bless God, we got a fountain now and two gods. Hogwash or horse feathers. There's no, that's stupid. You've got a son. And Brother Branham described how the son did it. You are intrinsically and basically human being. Uh -uh. You got an animal in you. If your soul wasn't a gene from God, you're a hybrid. You're looking at something different here. This is intrinsically God. Son of God. The dynasty of God. The firstborn. But Brother Branham said he was in the beginning and he was in a theophonic form. That's why he remembered and said, I want to get back to it. He laid that aside to become a man. You say, explain it. How, how, shall I, how, how can I explain it? <clears throat> I do my best and I still fall short, but I know it's there. Amen. And the more I talk it, the more I begin to see it. You know why? Because I'm stuck with the truth. Amen. What do I care? All that's going to endure is the truth. See? Now listen, then it says here, this same one, when he had him by himself purged our sins, sat down the right hand of majesty on night. Now hold it. Back when he did what Paul said he did, there wasn't a speck of flesh. There wasn't a speck of stardust until he brought it into being. Now this same one becomes flesh like John said. Logos. <clears throat> now starts descending into flesh. And he starts way back there. And Logos, remember in the beginning was the Logos, the Logos with God, and the Logos was God. Brother Brandon said, you dare make that Jesus Christ? You've got three gods. 
You're talking about God expressing himself. Now the Trinitarians say that's great, and God does. And out of the fountain, God comes a son. Hogwash, that's not God the son. That's the son of God. That's right. Being made much better than the angels and so on. And he makes a covenant. <clears throat> And the covenant is all the angels are going to worship him. He's going to have a scepter of righteousness. The very foundation of the earth laid is going to come back to him in the government of God. And only then will it be the government of peace, the God of peace, the God of all consolation. Wipe away every tear. The God of love. You see, there it is. We are beholding all of these things through eyes that are veiled. But now that we're coming face to face, and we did, and that's face to face right now, brother, sister. I'm sorry, be just face to face. Because what you're looking at is looking at you. You see a picture? Nah, -uh, I'm gone beyond the picture. <clears throat> I'm way beyond the picture. I see the picture. But what's behind the picture sees me. Reads my heart. Then he said, you made him lower than the angels. You gave him a part of the flesh, but not all of it. And due to that, because he died and shed his blood, <clears throat> he's now in the midst of the church singing praise to God and ends up in New Jerusalem, Revelation 22, the tree of life with the leaves giving healing to the nations. And Brother Brown said it was peace, keeping peace. Right to the end. All right. <clears throat> Back in Hebrews 13, 20. The everlasting covenant. Paul does not specify what it is. But he must have been talking about it to the Hebrews or he could not mention it. For him to now mention something about it without having talked about it would be folly. No author interjects a character out of nowhere. Uh-uh. You got to introduce him. <clears throat> you got to bring him in the script. Paul doesn't throw something in the script here and say, now figure that one out, guys. He tells you what it is. Let's take a look at some of this. Hebrews 7, 23 to 24. And they truly were many priests because they were, and, and because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchanging priesthood. <clears throat> we got something everlasting here. An everlasting priesthood. Okay. Compare this with 716. Who is made not after the commandment of a carnal co co a commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Therefore, this is Melchizedek. Now, <clears throat> over here in Hebrews, same book, watch what he says in Hebrews 13. 12 to 14. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach, because without the camp, there's a continuing city. Because of the shed blood. The covenant. What was his covenant? You're my son, this day have I begotten you. Sit down my right hand and make the enemies your footstool. Let the angels of God worship you. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down my right hand. <clears throat> the Lord God said, your kingdom is, is, a, is a kingdom of righteousness. Your scepter is a scepter of righteousness and peace. You're exactly what I patterned in Melchizedek. You're patterned on me. You're my expression. You're my continuity, as it were. You're my son, as no other son ever was or ever will be. I'm giving you many sons. <clears throat> giving you many children. They, in turn, will make a bride. You'll be in the midst of them. I'll bring all things under your feet. And you'll turn the kingdom back to me. Because I'm the one that really did it. 
The Gnostics didn't understand it. When this scripture came around to their turn to understand, and they were in the first ages, they couldn't understand it. <clears throat> and so they said there was a God. And he began saying, well, I did this and I did that. And the female voice shouted, shut up. I'm the one that did it all. I just let you have a hand in it. Trinitarian hogwash. Captivating dogma of the filthy human minds. The excrements of a human mind. Yeah. No wonder Paul called it dumb. There's not a better word for it. If you can find one, let me know. <clears throat> the covenant of God. They started way back there in the mind of God, in God doing it all. The blood of the everlasting covenant. I'm going to skip that. There was enough in Hebrews here. Well, let me go back to Hebrews 1. I don't think I better leave this out for you. <clears throat> I'll just grin it and then we can quit. And I can read my notes and start over. We read Hebrews 1 in the sense of the word 2 to 13, which is talking about him as the Son of God, the very outraying of God. And this is the promise down the line from creation to the ultimate of creation. Then he speaks of him becoming flesh in order to blood, <clears throat> thereby saving a bride, giving himself a bride, paying for the bride, bringing her to where he is, and so on and so forth. Very good. Now, <clears throat> with that, we go to Hebrews 5, 5 to 6. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Now, just a minute. In the beginning, he did not glorify himself to say, Now, God, I want to tell you something. I'm your firstborn son. Everything comes down to me. And remember, the Jews said, When he called himself the son of God, he made himself equal with God. They understood the firstborn. He gets one half of his father's kingdom. That's right. <clears throat> he called God. He didn't say, now, Father, I'm going to tell you what you're going to say. The Father said it. You understand? He did not glorify himself. It says in Philippians, he laid it aside. He would not keep his role. Right? That's right what he said. Philippians 2nd chapter. <clears throat> that this mind is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not a prize to be grasped retained people with God. <clears throat> he took on the nature of man. Now watch. Neither did he glorify himself to be made a high priest. He didn't. The Father did. Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. That was from the dead. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Without father, without mother, beginning days, the end of life. <clears throat> no genealogy as pertaining a father and a mother. Jesus' genealogy was in God, who created the sperm and the egg and put his life in it in the womb of Mary. That same one's life actually went into that egg and that sperm and brought forth that body. That's where Brother Brandon said he made himself so teeny. <clears throat> he never made himself so teeny like the Puss in Boots who said to the giant, you are so wonderful, I really believe. But uh, 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 you couldn't. You couldn't possibly such a great person as you turn into a mouse. He said, can't I? So he turned into a mouse and she ate him. This is no puss in boots. This has got not God not making himself so low the devil can take him over. God, brother, sister, never changes. He's got all power and might, and the devil only operates at the will of Almighty God. Don't ever kid yourself. <clears throat> 
Hebrews 6, 13 to 20. For God, for in God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater. He swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I'll bless thee, multiplying, I'll multiply thee. I'm going to make you the human carrier. And so after he had patience endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation of them and end of all strife. We're in God willing more abundantly. Show unto the heirs of promise. The immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. God's word can't fail to begin with. Then God came down and said, listen to me. I'm telling you, it's true. <laughs> right there, look at it. Look at it. The Bible opened before you. Look at it. Never lied, never made a mistake, never failed it. He came right down. You believe that? That's exactly what it says. Because in the Greek it says here, he interposed himself. Confirmed it by an oath. He interposed himself. Paul, <clears throat> by the word of God, said, The Lord himself shall descend from the show. He interposed himself. And people can't understand the presence. People say, Mary, who do you think that is? Oh, God have pity, brother, sister. There's something wrong with people. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm sorry for them. But I'm going to rejoice in what God did for me. Hey, I got a brand new Buick out there. Oh, I feel so bad. I can't drive that car because nobody else has a brand new Buick. <laughs> I hope you got the picture. That was a gift. So is this. Don't be self-righteous mockers of God, brother, sister. I know people think I'm a dirty, mean guy. I am a dirty, mean guy. I admit it. But with this word, I am not. Listen, God said, bring mine enemies. He that doesn't scatter with me simply sits on his butt in the pew. It's against him. I'm going to be neutral. Oh, God, you say you can sit on it. Can't be neutral. The rug has been pulled from underneath you. He that scattereth not with me is against me. Boy, I hope you, if you get touchy with each other, please don't get touchy with me because I don't want you touchy with me to hurt anybody's feelings, but man, I'm not going to change the word of God for anybody. <clears throat> not going to do it. No way. We're in God willing to more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath he intervened himself that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie God or his word and his word demonstrated that it is his word we might have a strong consolation a strong encouragement the God of all consolation the God of all encouragement the encouraging God is right here what for to get us into the kingdom to put us in now <clears throat> who have fled for refuge that, to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which enters that within the veil wherein the forerunner is even it for us is entered even Jesus made an high priest after the order of Melchizedek the fact that God raised him we've got it made but he didn't stop there look what came down in the power of the resurrection and you sit here and say, I'm not going to make it. It's not going to happen. It's already happened. Amen. It's already happened. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. You say, why do you say it, Brother Dale? Because God calls those things to John out as though they were because they are. Amen. Prophecy is always in the past tense. Prophecy is always in the past tense. Because the word of God can't fail once spoken. <clears throat> Amen. That's the truth. 
I've said Hebrews 6, 30. Okay, now Hebrews 9, 23 to 28. <clears throat> It was therefore necessary the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these. Now watch. He's already entered into where we're going. How could he do it? It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these. What? Blood. <clears throat> what was purified? Listen. Listen. Let's read it here. Verse 20, saying, this is the blood of the testament which, is, which God enjoined you. This is the blood of the covenant. This is the blood of the will that God enjoined in you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both, both the tabernacle and all the vessels. Vessels of ministry. <clears throat> so what did he do with the blood? He purged the tabernacle. He purged the vessels. Every single one of us. <clears throat> he sprinkled blood upon the book, giving life to the word, eternal life to the eternal covenants. He can't fail. For Christ, verse 24, for Christ is not into the holy places made with hands, <clears throat> which are the ha figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. How? By the blood. You talk about wonderful. Nor yet that he should suffer himself often, as the high priest enters the holy place every year with the blood of others. But then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world, the ages, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The end of what ages? The ages when the blood of a bull and goat signified the coming blood. No more blood. And so they're looking for the ashes of the red heifer, and they think when they get the ashes, they'll, they can sacrifice, and the blood will take effect in Israel. Hogwash. Wasting time. You got a prophet. <clears throat> Listen to the prophet. That's the point that a man wants to die, and after the judgment, verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of the many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. <clears throat> those who look for him, he'll appear to them. I'm to ask you a question. Tell me anybody who was really looking outside the prophet. Oh, there is a spirit in the land like in Israel to Christ's first coming. They say, it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be right soon, right soon, right soon. And some said, my eyes are going to hold it. Yes, sir, I'll be there. And you bet that's true. <clears throat> but the majority failed to get it. So far, so good. Now we go back to Hebrews 13. I'm going to so far so good, but this to me anyway. I'll, I'll say it is. Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. <clears throat> now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will of working in you, that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. What's, God, what's Jesus doing in you? The Holy Spirit. He's giving you the word. That's right. Now notice. Here is the God of peace making out a will. An irrevocable eternal legacy, but functional only by the shed blood for the remission of sins. <clears throat> right. Hebrews, the third chapter. Wherever holy brethren partakes of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Je confession, Jesus Christ who was faithful to him that was appointed as also was Moses faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Now we're looking for God all in all, right? And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken hereafter. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, whose building we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. It all depends on what you do with the word of God revealed to you. <clears throat> because what is your earnest expectation? Hope is beyond faith. Faith is what you believe for. And you know it's there. Then you come to the place where you can earnestly expect 
And that's got to be based upon something that you see because Paul said, what do we yet hope for when we've seen it? There it is. Don't talk about him coming. <clears throat> Don't talk about him appearing. He already has. Now the blood's effective. Now it's on the doorpost and lintels. Now you can talk back and forth to him. <clears throat> and that's when we, what we do when we talk the word in the light of the true revelation by the Holy Spirit. A real communion. Hebrews 8. First verse, now of the things which you have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. What true tabernacle? Some little thing, some little thing in heaven? No. He's building a true tabernacle. For what day? When you don't need a tabernacle, a temple. There's no temple because God and the Lamb are the light. And we form the building around it. New Jerusalem. <clears throat> For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice where the of is ne of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if you are on earth, you should not be priests, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to law, who serve under the example of the shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished to God when he was about to make the force, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. Couldn't deviate. Take one word or leave it. But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. <clears throat> for if the first covenant had been faultless, then, that, then there should no place have been found for a second. But finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Jacob. Now according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers, the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. Now notice, our covenant, as we're being led out, is a covenant that we regard. Brother Branham said, the bride at the end time would not fail. Her minds would be set. Radar locked in. Zooming right to the sun. The sun of righteousness. Locked in. Unless you're a hypocrite. <clears throat> and I don't think you are. And I'm not a betting man. But I got a thousand bucks. <clears throat> that says there's no way you can leave this message. Anybody want to win the thousand dollars by leaving it? You couldn't. You got a mindset. Or have you? But that's the secret. The mindset. They all saying, where could I go but to my Lord? And they're not going to a million miles of them. Yet they can have the peace of God, but not the God of peace. You can talk with tongues, genuine gifts, but not have the Holy Ghost. You can have the prosperity of God, but not the God of prosperity. You can have the consolation of God, but not the God of consolation. You can have the love of God, but not the God of love. Right? Interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> I thought it was. Okay. We read that far. We finished that, eight. We read it. Now, we could write it read down <clears throat> through 
He said here in verse 11, they shall not teach every one man his neighbor, but every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I, in other words, you don't have to say, I'm going to teach you the word, but I'll tell you this one thing. We both got the word, we're talking. For I'll be merciful to their right, un, listen, I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I not remember anymore. In that he said, the new covenant he made the first, the, it makes the first one old. Now that which decayeth and waxes old is ready to vanish away. Now listen, it tells you when that's going to happen. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, when God speaks the last time the one from heaven comes down, God is a consuming fire. Everything gets shaken down. You follow? <clears throat> you really follow? Now listen, you should be able to follow me when I said that because you know what Hebrews 12 said. <clears throat> now, right on down the line here to the 24th verse, let's go to 16. For where a testimony is, there must of necessity also be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men die, otherwise it is no strength at all, while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood, for in Moses had spoken every precept of all the to all the people according to the law. He took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book and the people. He sprinkled the tabernacle and the vessels and the ministers. <clears throat> Every single thing in pattern depended upon blood. And so blood is going to get us there because the blood of bulls and goats obtained until the true blood was shed. And it got them there already, but not to the holy city. Abraham and Sarah and the, and the, and the lovely bride of Christ in the Old Testament are already glorified where they are. Don't ask me. I don't know. Now hold it. Listen carefully. The testator has to die or there is no will, there is no legacy, there is no house, there is no building of God, there is nothing that God said. Now who is the testator, the man that died, the God of peace, the one who raised Jesus, but hold it. Did the God of peace die or did he pull off some stunt, he killed Jesus and just pretend everything is legal? No way. If the will maker did not die, there is no legacy. <clears throat> I can't make a will and then have you die and the will go into effect. So how did God die? Now that's the question. That's the steamy question that leaves us all with our spiritual tongues hanging out because it seems that nobody has an answer. <clears throat> they can really tell us, is there one God, two gods, or three gods? What's it all about? How could God actually die? Now, it tells you here how it's done. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19, For all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, who had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to this end that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto him, and hath committed unto us the word of re reconciliation. Jesus said, It's the Father in me doing the works. Then it was the Father in him creating the world and everything else. <clears throat> and it was, it was God in Christ doing this. This is exactly the same as it says in Philippians, the second chapter, let this mind be in us also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a prize to be grasped and retained equal with God, to be that primary son sharing all things because he was the begotten firstborn. But he emptied himself and made himself under reputation. And Brother Branham used the pattern of the kenosis which every single theologian uses and that is that God emptied himself into Christ all that he was and Christ emptied it all into the church. Say what you want about it. He said it. The theologians say, I make no bones. I say nothing. I just say what they say. <clears throat> but what happened? He's made in the likeness of men, the form of a servant, and being found in fashion of man, he humbled himself and became a beating unto death, even the death of the cross. Now it tells you right here, <clears throat> the first begotten, equal with Almighty God, and God in him doing all of this. Just like it says, God in you willing and doing his own good pleasure. It has water down to you and me, trickle on down. <clears throat> it says that's where it is, and that's how he was able to do it. In other words, the one of Luke 135 that said to Mary, the angel said, with God being present, all things are possible. And it never did tell us how God was present. <laughs> But he was right there doing it. He himself was right there creating the egg and the sperm right in Mary's womb. You say what you want. And that was that one, that son, that life to come forth. And he was that one. 
This is the same one as whom is said in Luke 1, 16, 17 concerning John, <clears throat> who was going to forerun the Lord God of Israel. And it said, John shall go before the Lord God of Israel. You do what you want about it. It's a mystery. I can't explain it. I don't understand it all. But I'm going to read you something. Now hold on to your hats and just listen. Page 520, the question and answer in seven seals. He's talking to a man. If God is one personality, why and how could he talk to himself on Mount Transfiguration? I just explained that. I'd like to ask you this. I'm going to. When Jesus prayed to the Father, you see, I believe you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, don't you, brother? Won't you stand up for a minute? That's a preacher. You claim to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I do too. Then what is that? Then I don't claim that I have, that I have the powers within myself, fold these mysteries. I don't have the power to heal the sick. It's God. I believe your ministry, if I'm not mistaken, from Arkansas. <clears throat> All right. And you, and in you is to preach the gospel. Ordinarily, you were raised on a farm around like that. You just don't know anything about it. But something came into you to preach the gospel. You don't claim that to be yourself at all. That's another person called the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Now, that's not the Holy Ghost. Or if everybody here has got the Holy Ghost, then where's God? Amen. You can't. You've got to understand what's going on here. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham was no different from the rest of us. There's something really messed up. Now, you don't claim that. That's another person. That's the Holy Ghost, right? Okay. Now, I want to ask you. That Holy Ghost dwells in you. Is that right? Do you talk to him? Speak to him? Pray to him? All right. That's all I want. Thank you very much. Now, do you get it? I'll ask you one. How did it come that when Jesus in St. John 3 said, When the Son of Man shall be, which is now in heaven, that is, now in heaven shall come to earth, and then being on earth said, Now is in heaven. And he stood right there talking to the person. Now, you answer me that. Jesus and the Father was the self-same person just the same as the Holy Spirit in me. Didn't say that guy. Just the same as the Holy Spirit in me. You're looking at me preaching, but it's not me. It's not me can speak a word that could bring, you know, an animal. Sat there, looked at it, killed the animal, ate it. That's creative power. That doesn't lay in human beings. Now, I don't care if you like this or not, this is what he said. This is the comprehension of the apprehension. And the comprehension still bamboozles us. It could not, it's not me could take a little boy here and the doctor's laying him on his back with heart trouble tonight and say, thus saith William Branham. No, thus saith the Lord is finished. And bring him down to the doctor the next day and it's, can't find it, it's all gone. A kid of leukemia till his eyes were bulged out and yellow all over in his stomach, you know, all bulged out, starvation. Until they took him to the hospital to give him blood and things to even get it there. And the doctor next day say, I can't even find a trace of it. That's thus saith William Branham. That's thus saith the Lord. Yet he is an individual different from me. But the only way he's expressed is through me. Amen. That's how Jesus and the Father were one. Jesus said, it's not me that does the works, it's my Father that dwells in me. Now the Son shall ascend, descend from heaven, he should say, he says ascend, which is now in heaven. See, what is it? He was omnipresent because he was God. Now, Brother Brown admits that God is an omnipresent. <clears throat> he's able to do that because he's spirit. And all things are present to him. But that's where Brother Branham lays it out. Now look, see that pillar of fire above him? That pillar of fire actually got into Brother Branham. Or God at times just simply moved through Brother Branham using his mouth and that pillar of fire up there did it. He had to be baptized with the Holy Ghost before there's a move. Now remember, <clears throat> they said, Brother Branham, I thought you were the son of the, the, the pillar of fire is the son of man. People say you are. He said, no. He said, I'm not the son of man. The pillar of fire is not the son of man. He said, it's in the form of the Holy Ghost, but it comes through a man. <clears throat> so the Son of Man ministry was God himself operating through a man. But you can't deny that Brother Branham categorically said, as God was in that Son, Jesus Christ, so in me, God in the prophets. <clears throat> Do we understand the whole mystery? We don't. But this begins to clarify the mystery. Why the test stater 
could shed his own blood to guarantee his own will and testament and truly only guarantee it by coming back and executing it. The God of peace through the, ev through the blood give you the everlasting covenant a will made out. Stop and think a minute. I'm going to let you go. <clears throat> Got your Bibles? Okay. Let's go back to the book of Genesis, the very first book. <clears throat> Chapter 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Image of God created him, male and female created him. He sent them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. I am giving you my will. Right? Right? Right. Here's my will. Here's my will, all made up. There it is. Man fell into sin. Then God went back to the original records. He went right back to his son. He said, it's all yours. You're going to pay a price. I'm going to pay the price through you. The shedding of his own blood. You say, Brother Vale, can you tell us more? Nope. Jesus one day said to the disciples, he said, Believest thou not in me, the Father, and follow me? He said, Who does the works? <clears throat> he, Don't you believe the Father's me doing the works? He said, The word I speak of the Father's words. He said, I'm going to tell you something. Greater than this shall you see one day. Well, Brother Vail, any theologian knows that that's a whole lot of people doing the same thing. They're a bunch of liars. It says, He. He. And the theologians ain't so hot. When God raised up or allowed Amy McPherson to be raised up and she had more healings than most of the men. And no right to handle the word. Do you believe what Brother Brown is taught? Amen. It's all in here. I don't care what he says. You take anything he said, it's right here. He was the one that God used. Literally, a physical Joshua in the sense that the word came out of his mouth, exactly what was in here. <clears throat> now the Holy Ghost has taken over. And he says, now listen, don't you dare move from the word that I have vindicated, which was already here vindicated. I came down one time and interposed myself and swore by myself, and I've done it again. You got a legacy this morning, brother, sister. You and I got that legacy from the original. And it's been proven, vindicated. I'm glad that one of these mornings we won't be mush-headed because we are. Now, we're not manure-headed. We're mush-headed. We're a little like the music that's coming by the speakers and they're distorted. Not the music, it's the speakers. Got a rattle. <clears throat> one of these mornings we're going to wake up like Abraham, you know, he woke up one morning and he said, hey man, he said, it's pretty rotten here. And it was. He was one day older and worse shape than his wife was too. Then one morning he opens his eyes feeling good. Man, he said, slept like a log. Feel like a knee. And he saw Sarah. And he knew the promise of God had come to pass thoroughly transpiring.
You know, Brother Branham said those people sure had resurrection faith when they saw the dead. Don't try to get ahead of schedule, brother, sister. Stick with this word. Stick with this word. Stick with this word. Let's all pray for each other to stick with this word and talk this word and talk this word until everything else becomes oblivious to it. Ask God to make us like the day after Jesus was raised from the dead. And on the road to Emmaus, they couldn't tell why, but their hearts began to burn. And oh, brother, sister, when they recognized, really recognized, when the revelation really struck and it was vindicated by, by the presence himself, God help us to get there. They were flaming fires, flaming bushes. You couldn't stop them. They're like a haystack in a windstorm on fire. You know what heat does, brother, sister? It begins sucking things up. Ever see a bonfire? That's why Elijah rose in a chariot of a whirlwind of fire. As the fire of God, brother, sister, moves us upward, the same fire of God is going to clean this earth for us. <clears throat> anyway, that's part of the everlasting covenant. Wednesday we'll review by just reading. Then we'll just continue on and see what we see in the Word. Let's rise at this time. Oh, let, yeah, you rise at this time. We've got it. We got a. We got a little baptism here. Almost forgot. Well, I'm sorry to keep you, but then again, I'm not. You had, I think, shorter sermons a while back, so that's taken care of. Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy, giving us your word, Lord, and we know that it's a blood that sealed the everlasting covenant. Lord, it's, it's marvelous to see the whole thing from Genesis 1 right through to Revelation 22. And there it is, an everlasting covenant. And you interposed yourself right down to the end. And then at the end time, we see it all brought into focus. Lord, we are not asking you for one more sign, one more anything as concerning your word, but we're asking concerning us. If you wouldn't mind, uh, if it's not hastening anything, we're, we're out of order. We pray, Lord, that you would take what Brother Branham said and we're trying to look at in the light of taking everything he said to, to your mouth, which is your word, Lord. Would you please quicken it to us in a way we haven't had it quicken before? We would all dearly love, Lord, to come to that place of a real, genuine quickening uh, in the Holy Spirit according to this hour, which already we have read that this covenant is not like the time you took, took them out of Egypt. No way. This is one where there won't be any adultery. There won't be adultery fornication. There won't be these things because you've got a bride and the prophet said she is not going to turn from this word. Now, Lord... Uh, you're the only one that can do it. And Lord, we're asking that you do it for us. And in gratitude then, Lord, may brotherly kindness come into this church to such an extent that you, who are love, can begin to rule our hearts and our minds as one people, as far as we can possibly go, that the grace of God may be manifested in every facet according to the word. And unto you we give the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and Peter is speaking in the house of Cornelius because he was brought there through divine intervention. And Peter opened his mouth and said of the truth, I perceive that God is no respect to the person, but in every nation he hath, he hath that fear. He's got those that fear him and work righteousness, and they are accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. See? Notice how you got peace in there, Lord of all? It's easy. See how the word always tracks, brother sister? You, you just can't change it. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, began from Galilee, after baptism, which John preached. How the God anointed Jesus and answered the Holy Ghost with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both the land and give me itself nobody but something happened to trip. But we're going to leave this after this dinner all. We're just going to have the baptismal service to go for the reading of scripture. So here it is, let's just pray. So here it is that God anointed Jesus and, and uh, he did all the rest of the devil. And we're witnesses of all these things which he did in the land of the Jews and Jews them. 
pool day through and hanged on the tree and then God raised up the third and shall glory. Not to all the people, not to witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and testify that is he which was ordained to God to be judge of the quick and dead, and to give all the pro and to and to, and to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth on him should receive remission of sin. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, and many as came with Peter, because of the Gentiles all support of the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard the speak with tongues and magnified God, and answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? That these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost, such as we. All right, now the thought I'm looking at here is, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost, even as we? <clears throat> so the baptism is very much in order, very much in God. It's, a, it's an ordinance that must be obeyed. And in, Mar and in Matthew 9, 19, 13 to 14, then were brought unto him little children that he should pray, put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them, and Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. What I'm trying to bring to your attention is this, and children sometimes seek baptism, <clears throat> and we have no way of knowing in their hearts, the same as we have no way of knowing in adults' hearts. We have people who come to this church as adults and they pray it away. They're baptized. The baptism really meant nothing, evidently. But it's a command to God. And especially is it the command to suffer little children, forbid them not. And so in baptizing Julia, we have no qualms or any fears whatsoever. She has expressed what she desires. <clears throat> and let us face it, you cannot go on with God until you are baptized in the water. There's no way. It's not meant to be out of order. Now, the Corinthian church was, and I'm not saying that some people accidentally could be out of order, because, let's face it, many people don't have opportunity to get to the proper sources like these Corinthian people did. See? <clears throat> so while they're being preached, and God knowing Peter's heart, and Peter not being fully aware of the full truth of the Gentiles, but knowing he was to take a part in something, he stood right there to see what God was doing. And as he preached on the salvation through the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, strangely, these people were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Evidence were manifested in signs and wonders, which at that time, the false vine had not come in at this particular time. So we saw genuine manifestation. And then he said, how are we going to withhold water? Now that makes you to know how important water baptism is. It's an absolute must. And suffer a little church to come unto me and don't forbid me. Now, we know that Brother Dave and Sister Ruth do not know what the future holds. This church doesn't, only God knows. But we, we honor the word of the Lord, the child's faith, <clears throat> and we believe that God which hath begun a good work and the Repentance is granted of God. God that hath begun a good work will continue till the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's already here. So we have high hopes, <clears throat> great faith, and I use the word hope, earnest expectation in scriptural context, not a hope and so I wish it so, my goodness, it might not be. We put our faith with her faith that there's a reality here that the Holy Spirit will take control of her life word upon word, and the life released, growing up into Christ, under the child training of God, as far as time permits, because we believe time is running. So may the Lord bless her when, the, when, when she comes back this afternoon to be baptized, and we'll announce it in the building. So let us rise and be on our way. Heavenly Father, go with us now. Thank you for the time you give us, especially Lord. We believe that something is in our hearts from this moment that wasn't there before because the clarity of the word is here, Lord, and we see it as the prophet told us. We believe it, we thank you for it, and we praise your name. Now under the King eternal and more than visible, the only wise God be all power, honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Amen.